What are some harmless ways to fuck with people? Oh man do I have a story. In my freshman year of college, my roommate was a very neat and orderly person. He had every pencil in place, every paper had a folder, and his things got neatly packed away. We were pretty amicable towards one another, even with my messy living. At first, when he would leave for classes, I would admire how tidy his desk was and thought to myself I should fuck with that. For the whole year we lived together I would sneak used staples everywhere on his stuff. Homework folder? Staple. Pencil case? Staple. Backpack? Staple. Shower caddy? You bet that pube infested bar of soap got a staple on it. Hell even the TV remote got a staple in it between the batteries so when they died he would eventually find another. I did it often but was careful to space the staple events far enough apart to not raise suspicion on myself. I further protected myself by making a huge deal of having to borrow the across the hall neighbor's stapler whenever I needed to bind papers together. About March of our second semester he had become insanely suspicious of anybody with a stapler and watched them like a hawk. The straw that broke the camel's back I had asked him one night what his plans were under the guise of having a companion over for a visit. He said after dinner he had to go check out some obscure book at the library. When he left and headed to the dining hall, I snuck off to the library, found the obscure book he needed, and clicked a staple into it. He gets back to the dorm room and I'm doing homework in the same spot when he had left an hour earlier, claiming the meetup didn't end up happening. He sits down at his desk and opens up his newly rented book and tick I hear that staple fall out onto his desk. All I hear after that is yo where the fuck all these goddamn staples coming from. I revealed myself after graduation when I mailed him a birthday card with a used staple in it. Thankfully he got the biggest kick out of the card and we still talk daily. We did this to a friend. I noticed when she bought her house, she had some prints in her kitchen of lemons, two prints. That was all I needed. I went to a charity shop and bought maybe 20 cheap picture frames, then googled lemon art and printed them in color at work. My friend's birthday, we were outdoors, and it began to rain, and the plan was to go to her house. I made my excuses and hopped in a taxi home to drop off my stuff, and to pick up a literal box of lemon pictures. We coordinated. My friend let me in, and I began ninjaing through her house dropping and hanging lemon pictures throughout her house. Sneaking into a crowded room and, this is the piece de resistance. Setting up a photo of her, delightedly holding an armful of lemon and limes my friend had taken weeks before. And then, we wait. At a later point in the night I bumped into someone I'd never met before, and he said in a hushed tone, have you noticed she seems to be obsessed with lemons? And I had to admit, conspiratorially, that that was something that had piqued my curiosity too. Practically every room in her house was partially lemon themed. That's my fave prank I ever pulled off. Call one of those house my driving bumper sticker numbers and let them know that their driving is wonderful. I've done that. One of my favorite driving stories. A guy I was driving behind in bad traffic was being a super calm traffic buddy. Driving very relaxed, not tailgating, confident but not a pushover. I was behind him directly for a while then we got separated then I was behind him again and realized I liked following him because he was less herky-jerky to follow in the slow and go traffic. I was bored so I called the number. They were very confused. I had to reiterate a bunch of times I was calling to report a good driver. He hadn't done anything amazing but the company on the pickup seemed like a hard job for mediocre pay and I figured he could use a kindness. A half hour later we came upon the reason for the traffic. A really awful merge in a construction zone had bad signage and even worse coneage and street conditions. The lane ending sign referred to the wrong lane. So a lot of responsible early mergers were then stuck in a lane that ended abruptly at a cliff. I was one of them. The traffic in the through lane was too fast and flowing for us to get in. Any gaps were filled by folks behind us merging into it while they were still moving. It was too congested for any of us to safely get in and a good 5 to 7 of us were stopped cold for minutes and stressed because we were constantly trying to time an entry. One or two in fast cars would risk it and cause dangerous braking so that didn't seem wise. Then, from a ways back, who do we see slowly coming into focus from around a curve, good driver guy. He was coasting steadily but was slowed way down versus those he was following and he had left enough of a gap that we could slide in in front of him. This space and speed buffer had single-handedly slowed the pack enough to make the zipper merge start to work behind him so that no one else would get stuck for a while. My wife and I started losing our shit. No fucking way. It's how's my driving guy. We had reported him as an excellent driver in a phone call that heavily exaggerated his heroism and then he went on to actually save the day. Great moment. In high school at track practice we stole one of our friend's car keys. 
It was old enough it didn't have a chip inside. We drove to Home Depot and got a copy made and returned his keys. Every day at practice we would move his car to a different parking spot but in the same lot. At a pharmacy, pick up a box of condoms and take it to the cashier. When they ring it up, balk at the price and say that you need to replace it with something cheaper. Come back with plastic wrap and tape. Something I did in high school, I randomly found a half of a crayon on the ground. I managed to slip it into the pocket of a guy I knew. A few minutes later he discovered said crayon and rather loudly said WTF? And tossed it away. I wandered over, picked it up, and snuck it back into his pocket when he wasn't paying attention. A few minutes go by and he finds it again. Even more confused, he throws it again and wanders off. I managed to repeat the situation twice more before I couldn't stop laughing and he noticed me going to pick it up. He was really starting to question his sanity by the end. In the same vein, add a decoration to their Christmas tree. My mother and I do this to her mom. My grandmother is a stereotypical old white lady, for a little context. And we go to Lovers, or Spencers, or wherever and find the most inappropriate ornament we can and leave it on her Christmas tree. Tucked off to the far side so she doesn't see it until she's taking her tree down. Our favorite too include Santa doing bicep flexes in just his hat, and a stocking on his you know what. And Santa and Mrs. Claus with her skirts up, doggy style. We get great enjoyment out of this. Especially in January when my mom calls her mom for their weekly chat, and grandma is going on about this ornament she found and she doesn't know where it came from. Mom has to mute the phone because we're laughing our asses off. In college I had a roommate who was also a good friend. He would go to his parents on the weekends and lock the door to his room. My other roommate said I would give him shit because he knew we wouldn't steal his stuff or anything. So naturally, I learned how to pick locks. We would get into his room and do subtle things like mess up his bed and move things to other places in the room. Every week he would get back and be like did you guys fuck with my stuff? We would always say how would we even do that? You lock your room, we continue to do it the rest of the year. I don't think he ever figured out what was going on lol. I do the meow gag from super troopers from time to time. My dad is the king of this. He's be in the drive through and ask for his order to go. He'll wear his glasses I'll ask you and answer the door or speak to someone at work and just pretend nothing is wrong. People will ask him if he is who he is and he'll go sure or okay with a super ambiguous tone. He'll give the most ridiculous or absurd names ordering takeout because no one ever gets his name right when he orders. He'll mispronounce words when asking for things like at the grocery store like miss, where's the kirkle? Meaning cereal. The dude annoyed the shit out of my mom, but it's created years of memories and laughs for the family now that we're all older. My husband does not really like this one guy that he works with. I guess this guy is just an asshole to everyone for no reason. Anyways, this guy would come in the break room every morning and make him a cup of coffee. He was the only guy that drank coffee that my husband worked with. So to fuck with this guy, my husband took this guy's stack of styrofoam cups and poked the bottom of every other cup with his pocket knife. He barely poked the cup so a hole wasn't noticeable but the hole was small enough to still have a leak. So for a good week my husband and his other co-workers watched this asshole guy spill coffee on his shirt slash pants or table every other day. My husband never told anyone he did it but he said everyone got a good laugh every other day. Oh god I have several me and my adult daughters fuck with each other so hard. My daughter will wait till I'm ready to open the door to get in the car and she'll hurry up and lock it. When she comes in I always hide one of her shoes. Every time. She hides the remote to the TV. Puts the paper toilet paper backwards on the rolls and will put the plunger somewhere it looks like a decorative item, like on the top of my bedroom dresser. Last year when it was my birthday and I turned 55 she bought me a big elaborate cake and put a big sparkler 75 on it and was like oh I forgot I just know you're old so I took a guess. They put my toddler granddaughter up to asking me shit like. Granny, were you alive when Abraham Lincoln was born? And grocery or big box stores, I will sneak ridiculous shit in her buggy. Enemas. Preparation H, denture soak tabs. Or in said stores I will loudly say, like I'm talking to a 5 year old. Remember we are on your day trip honey, we only have 2 hours before I have to have you back in the asylum, so please hurry up and look for what items you need if you're allowed to have them. No sneaking in razors alcohol based stuff or lighters. I had a guy that came to work for us that was big time one upper. Always had a better story or whatever. Anyways. I bought the first new vehicle that I have ever purchased new. It was a Dodge truck. He was a Ford guy and kept telling me what a mistake I made. I didn't really care about a certain brand, I just liked the truck and my friend worked at the dealer. 
I got a good price. Well, a few months later he bought a new Ford F-150, loaded to the max. We all heard all about it. Believe you me. Well, one day after he pulled into our parking garage and was in a meeting, I poured a little oil on the ground right under the engine, knowing full well he would see it when he walked out. So the next day, he had a loaner car and said his truck was in the shop getting some upgrades. I knew better. Ha ha. One week later the truck was back, I did the oil thing again and he the had the loaner again for more upgrades. I kept this up on and off for the better part of two years before he ended up getting a different truck. I left the company a week later or the new truck would need upgrades too. Never told a soul until this post.